Hey, what's going on? Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to deploy a Flask app to an Apache web server. So let's get into it. All right, so to start things off, let me show you this super simple Flask app I have here on my local environment. There's an app.py file, a home.html template file, and a styles.css file. Other than that, there's just a pip file here because I used pip env to install the virtual environment and to install Flask. But let's close these three files and run the app locally. So I'll type pip env shell to activate the virtual environment. And then I'll type python app.py because that is the name of my file that has the Flask app in it and enter. So it's running on port 5000 locally, as you can see here. So I'll open that up in the browser. It just renders this one template with a bit of text in it. So that's the whole Flask app. Let's get it deployed to an Apache web server now. I'm going to close the terminal here and I'm gonna open up FileZilla. You can open up any FTP program that you have though. So on the left side, I have the local project directory and on the right, I have FTP'd into the production web server. And because I've already installed Apache, I have a var www folder for my document root. So let's go ahead and create a folder for this website. I'll create a directory. And I'm going to call it basic flask app. You can obviously call this anything you'd like. And I'll go into that directory and then I'll drag over static templates, pip file and app.py. You don't need to do the lock file because we'll actually create a new lock file automatically when we install all of our dependencies on the production server. And let's create a new directory here for error logs and we'll just call it logs. All right, now let's SSH into the server and install the virtual environment and dependencies there. So I've already SSH into the server here and let's see what's in here. We have this new directory we created, CD into that. And here we have the pip file. So within the pip file, we have information about the dependencies we want to install. So if we look at that real quick, we can see that we want to install Flask as a package and that we require Python version 3.9. So if we just try to type pip env install, we'll probably get an error that pip env does not exist. So let's install that just like it says here using sudo apt install pip env. Enter my password. Great, so that finished, let's try again. So we'll type pip env install, and this will use that pip file, right? So let's hit enter. So it could not find a pip file.lock, which is fine. It will create one. You can see it's installing the dependencies from the pip file and now it's completed. So we've now just created a virtual environment and installed Flask into it. In a few minutes, we'll need the path to this virtual environment. So let me show you how to get that. Just that pip env dash dash v-e-n-v for virtual environment. And this will tell you where it created that virtual environment. So this is the path to it. So we'll need this in a few minutes. But in the meantime, let's go back to the code. So to deploy this app, we're going to use an Apache module called WSGI. So we have to create a configuration file for that. So let's create a new file here and call it app.wsgi. And to start off, let's import system. And we have to specify the system path to the Flask app directory. So we'll type sys.path.insert0 and then var www basic flask app because if you remember that is where we put all of the flask files on our server and then we have to tell this wsgi module how to activate the virtual environment so we'll type activate this equals and then we have to put the path to our virtual environment so let's go get that again in the terminal so right here copy this whole thing and paste it in and after that path we have to do forward slash bin slash activate this dot pi. And then we have to open that. So with open activate this, which is this path here as file exec file dot read dict file equals activate this. And I have a little typo here. Exec. There we go. So what this is doing is it's going into the virtual environment, finding the activate this file and executing it. This is the same exact thing as when you create a new virtual environment locally 
and you activate that virtual environment. But Apache needs to do that automatically when it runs the site. So the last thing we have to do is import our Flask app. So we'll say from app, app meaning this file right here, import app, because if we look in this file, we've named our Flask app app. If we named our Flask app, hello world, we would have to say from app, because that's app.py, import hello world. But we didn't name it that, we named it app. So it's a little redundant, but that's why we're doing it this way. And then we have to say as application. And that's it for our WSGI configuration file. So let's upload this to the server. If we go back here and refresh, we can just upload that. Perfect. So next we have to create an Apache virtual host configuration file for the website. So let's create a new file here. And I'm going to call it basic flask app.conf. And I'll paste this in here rather than type the entire thing out. And let me just walk through line by line. So we want this site to run on port 80 rather than some other random port. If you are going to install an SSL certificate, then this would be running at port 443. But in this example, I'm just going to run on port 80 so it won't have HTTPS. And here I put my server name. My server at the moment is just an IP address. I haven't hooked a domain up yet. So that's all that is. And then we have to say WSGI daemon process and give it a name. So I'm just calling it Flask app. We could call this anything we want, but we have that there and there. So they have to match. And the user that's going to run it is www data. Same with the group, because that's the user and group that Apache runs as. I'm giving it five threads, but you can change that if you'd like, depending on your server. So then we have WSGI script alias, and this is the path to that app.wsgi file that we just created. So it's in var www basic flask app slash app.wsgi, because once again, that's where it lives on the server right here. And then here we create a directory block for that Flask app directory. And then we specify the WSGI process group, which is this new group name that we just specified up here. WSGI application group is global. And then we say allow from all so that this is accessible to random people visiting your website because we want it to be accessible. And then I've created an alias for the static directory here. So slash static will direct into this static directory. And then I've specified that we want to allow all connections to files within these static directories. So people can access the CSS file and any JavaScript files, that sort of thing. And finally, I've just set up a few custom error logs here. So we created that logs directory a few minutes ago, and it will spit any errors out into this error.log file. So that's all for our virtual host configuration. Let's upload this to the server. So back in FileZilla, I'm going to go to etc and then Apache 2, sites available. And I'll refresh on the left side here. So now that we've uploaded that configuration, we have to actually enable this new site in Apache. So let's go back to the terminal and type sudo a2n site. So Apache 2, enable site and then the name of our configuration file, which was basic flaskapp.conf. Put in your password. And now we just have to reload Apache. So let's do that. And as you can see, it failed. So let's see if we can find out why. So type sudo apache ctl config test to test that configuration that we just uploaded. So invalid command wsgi daemon process. And that's because Apache doesn't know what WSGI is because we haven't installed the WSGI module yet. So I'm going to paste in a command to install that here. So sudo apt-get install lib apache2 mod WSGI for Python 3. So let's go ahead and install that. So when it installs it, it will actually enable it as well. But if you want to manually enable it, or if for some reason it didn't, you can type sudo a2n mod. So apache2 enable a mod, a module, and then WSGI. But as you can see, it is already enabled. So let's go ahead and run that config test again to see if we solve the problem. All right, so we're not getting that error anymore. This is just saying that we haven't specified a domain name, but that's okay. We've gotten rid of that WSGI error. So let's restart the server again. And let's try to load the app in the browser now. 
So this is the localhost version. Let's open a new tab and I'll put in my IP address or in your case, maybe put in your domain name and hit enter. So we're getting an internal server error. Let's see if we can debug that looking at the error log. So we'll go back here and we'll type vim logs error dot log. So name error file is not defined. All right, so I probably made a mistake. Let's go back to the configuration file app.wsgi. And here when I said open as file underscore, I needed to type file underscore read. So let's save that and re upload. right here and let's restart the server again and test it out and there you go we are loading the flask app on a production apache web server so if you do get any other errors make sure to check that logs slash error dot log file but this is a pretty simple flask app so there wasn't a whole lot of fancy stuff we had to do all right that's all for this video if it was helpful please make sure to hit that thumbs up button and if you want to see more videos on python flask and web app development in general then make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.